So as I wait for my AirPod Pros to update, which by the looks of it is probably gonna be till next year because I've tried everything humanly possible to update these things, we're gonna take an episode fully dedicated to Samsung because there was a bombshell of brand new Samsung products coming out. Don't know when they're coming out, but we know that it could be around the corner and it has to do with the fan edition. It looks like the fan edition is coming back. And uh, why? Alrighty, so there is going to be multiple different products that we're going to talk about. So I'm just gonna compile it into one long story. And then of course, I'll give my final thoughts at the very end. So be very patient with me on this one. According to Evan Blach, the god of baldness, apparently, it seems, there is going to be a brand new fan edition phone in the horizon coming soon. Samsung seems to be bringing back the fan edition with the S23 FE. And apparently, it seems that according to his renders, we have a full 360 degree look of this phone. It is exactly what we thought it would look. There is nothing here that I can say is revolutionary or anything breathtaking by renders. But when we look into the details of the specs, that's a different story. So according to several reports, it seems that there are going to be two models released, one for the European models, and then of course in America. According to reports, it says here that the American models will be powered by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, and the European models will be the Exynos 2200, with models set to come in at 6 to 8 gigabytes of RAM, 128 to 256 gigabytes of storage. The display will be a 120 hertz FHD plus AMOLED panel. In short terms, a better panel than what the iPhone 15s are shipping. But of course, knowing people, they don't really care about that stuff. But anyway, it's good to know that a fan edition phone can do better than that. So plus one, I suppose. Moving on, it then also says the phone will have a 4,500 milliamp hour battery, will support 25 watts of fast charging. And then we take a look at the camera layout. It is going to be using different sensors, but it will have a 50 megapixel main lens, an eight megapixel ultra wide, a 12 megapixel telephoto lens, and then of course a 10 megapixel selfie camera. On top of that, the 50 megapixels sensor will have OIS for obviously, if you know the translation to that, and if you don't, optical, uh, okay, let's do that again. Optical image stabilization. There we go, Jerry Rig taught me a thing or two. And then lastly, of course, the S23 FE is reportedly going to be around the $500 to $650 price tag. And we don't know exactly when this phone is coming out, but based on these reports, there is going to be more than one fan edition product. See, this is now where the story starts to expand because taking a look further, we also have reports of a new tablet S9 FE and tab S9 FE plus. And then of course, for those of you that have been watching me for Galaxy Buds, there is also going to be Galaxy Buds FE. So let's take a look at the Galaxy Bud FEs before we get to the tablet. So essentially the Galaxy S23 FE is going to start an ecosystem of fan edition products for those that want a Samsung experience without having to break the bank. And it seems that is the position that Samsung is playing here. Because taking a look at the Galaxy Buds, essentially it is a recycled design of the Galaxy Buds and Buds Plus design. However, that is a good positive because we will have the return of the ear tips, which you can swap and customize. It will feature new ear tips. It will have the motion controls. It'll have the touch pads. It'll have a brand new charging case with USB-C. And then of course, in regards to the sound quality, we don't have any indication of what it's going to be. Some reports are suggesting that it will just be the Galaxy Buds Plus drivers, a woofer and tweeter, but a cheaper uh, design to accommodate for the sound quality, of course. And then of course, the rumored price tag is $100. Now, for my audio fans, if you like the Galaxy Buds, if you love the Galaxy Buds, but you don't like the customization, well, then the cheaper models are on their way. Now, I will say this, you know, I don't like that they're making it the cheaper Galaxy Buds with the better customization, but I will be honest with you. That was the first product that got me into Android, the Samsung Galaxy Buds, the customization, the features, and things you could do on the Samsung phone that weren't able to be done with AirPods. But of course, times have changed. 
but I like the original Galaxy Buds and the Buds Plus, and the Buds Plus featuring a two-way driver design helped to improve the sound quality and give better separation and better detail. And also the battery life was also stellar. So for me, them bringing this back as a fan edition thing, I'm okay with it, but I would have liked to have been returned in a premium model where we can customize more. Now taking a look at the Tab S9 and S9 Plus FE, it says here that yes, they are going to be releasing two tablets. One will be an 11 inch with six gigabytes and 120 gigabyte memory, which will be coming in at around the $650 price tag. And then you have the S9 FE Plus, which will be a bigger 12.4 inch display with eight gigabytes and 120 gigabytes of memory. And that will also be coming in at $800 estimate. So taking a look at all of these, and again, of course, if you wanna get into the specs real quickly, both tablets will be powered by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. One of them will also be powered by the Exynos 1380. We don't know exactly where that's gonna fall and if that makes the sense, why would the FE phones have a Snapdragon Gen 1 if that's gonna have the Gen 2? I Listen, we're going all over the place, so let's, let's stick to this. Let's break this down. Starting with the S23 FE, I can understand Samsung wanting to capitalize on the mid-range market. We have seen for the past few years that there are a lot of people that are open to the mid-range market. They are willing to get those premium features in a cheaper phone. And on the flip side, we have seen that in Samsung's case, because their flagships haven't really moved the needle, the fan edition did move the needle what so slightly. So there is momentum to be held here if Samsung can keep that up. Taking a look at the Galaxy Buds FE, while I am happy that they are bringing back the older design because I did like that older design, the customization, I do really question why it's being made at all because the Galaxy Buds are already very cheap to begin with. They're not that expensive and they are relatively very affordable, but $100 is $100 and I guess it could make a few perks here and there. And then the whole tablet line. Now, this is a little perplexing to me because the Tab series has never really been one to go on the cheaper end. And considering these prices, they're still not going to be that cheap anyway. But I can make a few arguments that, you know, if you're catering to create an ecosystem of this fan edition, whatever cycle you want to make, then there is something to be held here. But all I have to really say about this is I am a little bit puzzled as to why Samsung is doing this now. I think I might know the reason, but I don't want to say it because again, I don't necessarily want to be responsible for putting out false information or even creating speculation. So I'm going to keep my opinions very separate from this as to why I think they're doing it. But I would say this, while I'm not against the fan editions, I don't really see the necessity of it because everybody has a Samsung Galaxy. They have foldables. They have so many phones in their lineup continuing to try to add more and more is just so confusing. And it really makes you wonder why would you get this phone or this phone when you can get that phone? And it just, it creates a lot of confusion. And for me anyway, I just don't really see it being a big deal as it did when it first dropped. But with that being said though, I am not against the idea. While I may not agree with them doing it right now, I can see the potential. You put this phone in carrier stores, you put it in third-party carrier stores that cater to the mid-range market to consumers that don't have the flagship money phones and they can get something of that line, then that makes total sense. And on top of that, you're giving them flagship-like quality, which again is something that OnePlus used to do, but of course we know they fell off the face of the earth. So bottom line here, the fan edition seems to be making a comeback but I'm not too really crazy for it, but I'm not against the idea either. I do think there is potential. I do see the possibilities. I can see them expanding this for the budget and I can see this going into the Galaxy Watch era. I can see it all right now, but the question is, will consumers see it like that? Only time will tell, we'll have to wait and see, but I just wanted to dedicate this episode on that and I just wanted to talk about it because I really think that Samsung trying to re-resurrect the Fan Edition series is a good concept on paper, but we'll have to see how it is in execution in real time.